This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this repeated background design using Inkscape. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Inkscape here. The first thing we want to do is set up our document so that we're all working with a similar view and with a similar setup. So I'll go to File, Document Properties. We want to make sure the display units are set to pixels. And then I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border and then close out of that. What I want to do next is go to View. Uh, make sure we have custom selected. We'll go to zoom. We'll zoom in at one to one. And then we'll go to the, um, we'll come over here to where it says align and distribute. Open up that menu. We're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. And what I want to do now is I want to come up here to the snapping menu. And I want to make sure we have this enabled right here that says snap cusp nodes. And then we want the one next to it enabled as well, the one that says Snap Smooth Nodes. And what I'll do now is I'm going to come over here to this little box on the left of these four boxes right here. This one on the left that says when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We're going to want that turned off for the duration of this tutorial. And this little lock icon right here, we're going to want that turned on. So once we've done that, we're good to get started. I'm going to grab the Circles and Ellipses tool. And I'll hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And I'm going to give this a black outline by holding Shift and clicking on the color black right here to give that an outline. And then I'm going to click on this red X right here to get rid of the fill color. So what I want to do now is I want to come over to the Stroke Style tab and uh, if your de default units are not pixels, just go ahead and set that to pixels. I want the width of this stroke to be 100. So hit 100 and hit enter. And then I want to come back to the select tool, which is up top here. And I want to change the width of this to 300. So just clear out whatever's in there, hit 300 and hit enter. And then I want to duplicate this by hitting control D on the keyboard. And that's going to create a duplicate copy. You can't really see it, but it's there. And with that duplicate copy, I'm going to add 400 pixels to it. So this will be 700. So I'm going to change the width of this to 700 pixels. Hit enter. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit so I can see this all better. I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a few times to zoom out. And then I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to hit control D. I'm going to change the width of this one to, um, well, we're going to add 400 to, to the 700. So it'll be 1,100. Hit enter. We'll do that again, hit Control D to duplicate it, add another 400, making it 1500. And we'll do that one more time, hit Control D to duplicate that, and make this 1900. And now we will have all the circles that we need. So I'm going to click and drag over all of these, and I'm going to center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And I'm going to go to uh, Path, Stroke to Path, and then Path. Union. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And if you notice at the far, at the quadrant of each side, there's nodes. There's a node on the outside, and there's a node on the inside, all the way here to the far left, to the far right, to the bottom, to the, to the top up there, and in between. So uh, this snapping up here means that we could snap the cursor onto these nodes so that we can use them as reference points for what we're about to do. So I'm going to grab the uh, Draw Bezier Curves the, uh, tool, the Bezier pen, and I'm going to snap to this left side over here and click. And I'll snap to this right side over here. I mean the inner, the inner side right here and click. And then I'll snap to this one right here and click. And again, to zoom in and out, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. I'll snap to this one right here to the top and bring it back around to the starting point and connect it back together like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the select tool. I'll hold shift, click on the object and go to path intersection so that we're left with this little quadrant object right there. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this down about in half. It doesn't have to be exactly in half, just somewhere thereabouts is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D. And I'm going to flip that horizontally with this button right here, flip selected objects horizontally. And I'm just going to click and drag this over here and snap it onto the right side like that. And then I'm going to du uh, duplicate that shape by hitting Control D. I'm going to flip that horizontally and vertically. 
And I'll just take this and snap this over here down there. I'm going to take this object right here. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that. I'm going to flip that vertically, snap that right here. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object up top here, hit Control D to duplicate that, and snap this one down here. And I'm going to make this one red just so we could differentiate it from the other shapes. What I want to do now is just zoom in over this area. I'm going to hold Control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen and I'm going to draw a line going through this outer black band of this shape right here. So I'm going to start outside of the red object right about there and just draw a line going through there like that. And finish it up going around the outside and back to the starting point like that. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the red objects and go to path, difference. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little more. I'm going to hold shift and click on the other black objects right there and unify them together by going to path union. And if you take this shape and move it out of the way, we can now take these shapes over here, click and drag over them and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. So what we have right here, this here is the individual object that you can repeat over and over and over again. And it creates the design that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up. I'm going to give this some color. I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to make this like an orange, uh, an orange shade. Then I'm going to right click this and go to copy. And I'm, I'm going to come over here to the squares and rectangles tool. I'm just going to create a rectangle of any shape. It doesn't really matter. Any shape, any size. Hold shift, click the uh, red X to get rid of the outline. Convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then we'll go to edit, paste size, paste size. And I'm going to make this yellow and I'm going to uh, lower this to the bottom. I'm going to come up here to the select tool and lower it to the bottom by clicking this button that says lower selection to the bottom. Click and drag over those both and just center them up on the uh, horizontal and vertical axis like that. And now we can group them together by pressing control G on the keyboard. And what you could do now is you can duplicate that again, hitting control D and you could just snap them together like that. Duplicate them, snap them together, duplicate them, snap them together, duplicate these. And I'm sure you get the idea the design is starting to take shape there. Another thing you could do is you could take this object right here. You can go to edit, clone, create tiled clones. And uh, we're going to choose rows and columns. And we could we could dictate how many we want to create over here. So. If you want three rows and 10 columns, you want it to be three long, but 10 wide like that, you would write three for the rows, 10 for the columns and hit create. And there you have your repeated background right there. Uh, what you could also do is you could just take this one file right here. You could just take this one little piece and just upload that. You could export it as a .png from within Inkscape and you could upload that to, uh, let's say like a website or something like that. And if you use that as the background of your site, it'll just repeat over and over and over again in the web browser and it'll appear as a seamless background like that. So that's pretty much how you can go about creating this sort of repeated uh, background design using Inkscape. If you haven't done so already, please consider joining the Logos by Nick mailing list in order to receive email alerts whenever new tutorials are posted. Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else, and you will never receive any kind of spam or promotional offers from me whatsoever. The only time you will ever receive emails from me is when new tutorials are posted, and you'll get to watch them on the Logos by Nick website without any third-party advertisements interrupting your learning experience. In fact, you'll also get to watch some other exclusive tutorials that I don't upload here to YouTube. So go ahead and check the link in the description if you're interested in that. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.